Hope you're having a great day. Thanks so much for watching The Creatives of North Texas. My guest today is an artist who is a sign maker, a mural painter, and a logo developer and has done work for Warner Brothers as well as so many businesses around the local North Texas area and I'm honored to have Warren Lunt here today. Thank you for being here. Hey, um, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. How's this year been for you so far? It's been pretty good. Started out slow but uh, we uh, I've gotten a couple of good gigs. Got a um, mural for uh, a Kroger store in Arlington that that uh, kind of pulled me through. The the has let me kind of chill out a little bit this summer and not have to hustle mu so much. I really like that. Uh, so you entered a contest? Well, uh, it was kind of a contest. It, most contests they they want you to submit artwork to win. This one you you didn't have to initially submit artwork. You just sent them portfolio pieces to be able to place. Oh really? Yeah. 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 And then after that they chose three people to do drawings. So they paid for the drawings and somehow I, I won the contract. So yeah, well, that's it's good. been pretty good. Because you've been doing this a long time. You've done a lot of painting for years. Yep. That's pretty much all I've done in, in my adult life, my, I grew up, my parents were both uh, kind of semi-professional artists and uh, so it's just, I don't know, it's like what else do you do? Yeah. <laughs> it's like if you're already in the loop, you know? And your grandfather even did some sign making? Yeah, my, grand, my granddad uh, on my mom's side uh, didn't really know him that well but he uh, he was a sign guy and I would go visit him every once in a while and it was just really impressed me how bohemian his lifestyle was, how he could break away and go buy me cowboy boots and take me to lunch and just, you know, cool stuff all over the room. And yeah. So it, that's kind of why I decided to go that way. Yeah, the lifestyle. The yeah, yeah. But it, it has its challenges. I just the, the, the work is like it, when we got into really doing murals, then you had to what set up things to stand on, what do you call them, rack, ramps? Um, scaffold. Scaffold, I yeah. almost forgot what they were called. Mm -hmm. and it's, uh, it's like you put somebody in pressure, under pressure, you go, uh, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, well. Because I've seen the pictures, so, sometimes you have a group of people helping you with some of the bigger stuff. Oh yeah, um, yeah. the bearded monk was like that. We uh, That was 72 we, feet. It's 72 feet, but it's not the biggest one in town. The biggest one in town is uh, the over by the Juicy Pig that uh, Melanie uh, Smith and her husband did. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, it's like 92. So it's, it's, they won. No, wait, Dan won. Dan's is huge. Really? Dan, uh, Dan Black did a, you know, did the one on the side of uh, Andy's. Oh. So that's probably the biggest one now. Yeah, so, is he finished with that now? Yeah, yeah, really? it's done. Looks good. Looks Yours, what was it that you painted for the bearded monk at that time? Oh well, we had a we were going to have a party. Uh, he, he made it an event, and um, so the the day of the dead after the races, we were going to have everybody come over there and, and paint. And so we had like a hundred people, you know, on Facebook had said they were going to come show up and paint. Hmm. So I I I designed it, and me and uh, um, the owner, Ben Easley, and a, a couple other guys would go over there at night and draw it all out, lay it all out oh, really? on the side yeah. of the building and then we had a party where they where people came. But we got rained out so the second day only 30 people showed up. And oh yeah. About 30. A bunch of people, a bunch of good artists here in town helped do that. So. What did you guys actually do the initial drawing with? Uh, Sharpies. Sharpies. Yeah, we just oh, go right. out there at night and project. You know, you have to lay it out. You take a picture of the building. You, you, you know, figure out where the windows are. You figure out where the, you know, the electrical boxes and the wiring and doors and all that kind of stuff is, so that you don't put images in a way that you can't 
reproduce them. So you have to pretty tediously lay out murals. Mm -hmm. Anytime you do that, you gotta figure out what's there. So yeah. you go in and Photoshop, drop your artwork in there. Oh, then yeah. you make transparencies on something that big and take a projector out there, overhead projector at night and shine it up and draw it off with Sharpies. And then, the, you know, and then they came in and painted it in. <clears throat> what kind of paints would be used for something like that? Well, uh, initially we just had it painted white, you know. Like uh, a white background. Yeah, <clears throat> and I, I wish I could remember the guy's name. I could look on my phone, if my phone was on, and tell you the guy's name that did the painting it white. But, um, and then that was just with, you know, like a, a good exterior primer and house paint. And then we came back in with just black lettering enamel, one shot lettering enamel. Yeah. One shot lettering enamel. <laughs> it's a little endorsement there. Uh, and, you know, we just had the one color because the artist that we were kind of duplicating, his name is Rube Goldberg, and he always just did black and white pen, oh, really? pen yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> So did you take art lessons as a kid or? Um, well, the the only professional schooling that I had, I, I realized I had to go back uh, to school mid 80s, early 90s to take uh, computer graphics. Oh, I see, yeah. Because at some point you realized that if you couldn't do that, you were pretty much out of business. Yeah. But That's other than good. that, I just grew up around it. Uh, mm -hmm. My parents were always painting something in the room, and you know you had, had a, you had access <clears throat> to tools and all. That yeah, use. yeah, I was all there, you know, yeah. and, and so I never, like a lot of kids, get discouraged by their parents of you can't make a living at that, so you're going to need to find something else to do. And my parents never, never headed that direction. I mean, they were practical, you know, but but they never really discouraged me from trying to make money off art. You know? That's good. Yeah. Where, where did you grow up? I uh, was initially, I was born in Waco and spent a lot of time in Waco and Oak Cliff. Oak Cliff. And then uh, Duncanville. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you this, went to this, high school down there? I went to high school in Duncanville. Duncanville, yeah. yeah. That's changed a lot over the years. Yeah, it really has. It's huge now. You go down there and it's, it's like a totally different the, the high school is enormous in Duncanville. It's just one I high bet. school. Yeah. <laughs> so as you started doing doing the artwork over the years, you just you you eventually even did some things like uh, I saw the Beatles something. Um, what was that bass drum? Uh, like a peppermint or something. Oh oh, I've done quite a few renderings of the Sergeant Peppers. Sergeant I, I, Peppers. Yeah, I, you know, I really loved Sergeant Peppers and. So I've, I've done like a, my own personal piece. Well, actually, when I was in school, uh, I you know did a piece like that, and everybody loved it, and I gave it away to a friend uh, who moved to Alaska, so I never saw it again. Oh, really? But I decided to do another one uh, here about five years ago that after uh, John and George died. And then the one you're talking about is probably the one that was at uh, Atomic Candy on the window. Oh, Atomic Candy. Yeah, yeah. it was uh, <clears throat> Sergeant Peppermint's Candy Hearts Club Band. Oh, yeah. Yes. You did so, a good job with those. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I try to, my, my mentality for doing sign work or, you know, is, is to make you notice. <laughs> it's like, if you're going to pay me money to do something, I'm going to try to like knock it out of the ballpark and get you something that like makes people look at it. And there whatever. are ways to make it stand out. <clears throat> well, yeah. Um, you can paint shadows behind everything that you do. Yeah. And that'll, that'll pop it out, make it look more real. Gives it more depth. Yeah. 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 Like, um, there, there is a such thing as folk art. Is that is that true? Yeah. And then nat yeah. naturalism is like a. Um, well, if you're going to get into all of the different styles of art, you're gonna. You, I'm I'm gonna drop off pretty quick. I mean. Uh, well, you were but, influenced by some of these naturalists and realists in in, in ways. Well, the thing about sign work <clears throat> is you kind of have to be all over the place. Yeah. Because. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you can't, most artists try to develop a style so their style is recognizable so that 
people who want that kind of thing go to them. Yeah. In the sign business, you're playing to other people's ego. You're not playing, the artist is not playing to his own ego. Yeah. He's, he's like, you go in and somebody already kind of has a direction for mm -hmm. you. Yeah. And so you're kind of all over the place and all over, you know, you're just, you're everywhere as far as style goes. You're not yeah. really pigeonholed into one discipline, you know. But the way you you do colors, just the, the way it looks to me, and I, I don't know much about art, but just the colors, the way they blend and, and complement each other, just, it kind of reminds me of some of these naturalistic artists' work, and hmm. and <clears throat> I, it seems like pop art used to be a, pop, a, a thing, I guess it still is, folk art and pop art. Yeah. I've seen books on that, but. Well, there again, it's know. like I, I do everything from scratch board to, you know, people will tell you, you know, what they want. So yeah. chalk, chalk art, um, you, you just, when you do what I do for a living, you got to be really versatile as far as, you know, I don't know, I don't know, I can't think of anything that I've done that has been really uh, from a naturalist standpoint. Really? I mean, I, I have... Like One, Homer Winslow, do you, I mean, do, do you like his No, style? I'm more, I'm more of a pop art kind of guy. I mean, in my personal taste. Yeah. I mean, I like M.C. Escher, which is, is, you know, mostly pen and ink stuff. Really? But it's, it's visual acrobatics is kind of what it, what it is. It's like my own personal style is probably trying to hide pictures and make things two images at the same time and make things read two different directions and so personally I like quirky weird stuff yeah um, but you know I get I get into all kind of medium I get all I get into all kind of styles so I'm not trying to direct away from your question it's just like I can't for the life of me like pin it down to you know one style you know well, I think music's like that too. It's hard to say that they're just they play folk rock or yeah, whatever, you know, yeah. because it has so many other elements intertwined. Maybe psychedelic, sure, whatever, you know, and <clears throat> it's the same in art, I guess. Just so many elements are made, and like you say, you just have to do something for the for the client that they want when you're making a yeah. mural from some for someone. But <clears throat> another thing, actually, in my life is like I get bored really really easy if I'm doing the same thing over yeah, and over, over and over. And over yeah. So it's like it's just like a musician they're gonna go hey let's let's throw a, 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 a little bit of jazz into this country piece and mm -hmm. see what happens you yeah. know. It's kind of like can I get away with this kind of thing you know. <laughs> like on that what's the title of the piece you did for that Kroger in Arlington? It's called Roundabout. Roundabout. Yeah. What, what is that where it's like the, these two um, dogs? Oh no, the dogs, the dogs were actually a guy walked by my house walking those dogs and I asked him if I could take a picture of him because I was planning a mural and he was like really happy. I want, I want to get to show him the finished piece. I haven't seen him walking the dogs those since Those are Austin then. Street dogs? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, the guy, I've seen the guy twice, but as soon as I see him, I'm going to show him. I see her maybe give him some money or something for letting me take the picture. But the roundabout is was a reference to there's there's traffic circles in that neighborhood. Traffic that, circles. Yeah, and it's the only thing that I could really find that was exceptional about the neighborhood specifically. Yeah. Because that's what they wanted was something that spoke to the neighborhood. So mm -hmm. uh, I I put the roundabout on there at like a, a Google Earth view of the roundabout and um, then just used circles as kind of a connectivity in the community, um, you know. What did those lines mean that are close to those dogs? What do they mean? Oh, down by the, the soccer ball? The dogs. There's yellow are, lines and they're walking into in the that. grass or something? Yeah, that was supposed to kind of indicate a playing field for the soccer ball. Oh, okay, yeah. Like the grass that the dogs, the grass and the sidewalk the dogs are walking on turns into the playing field for the soccer ball. Yeah. Is that one of the slides you want to use for the show? Or? I don't, no, I don't think I don't have that included that. Yeah. No, they can go to. It's on your Facebook. Uh, yeah, it's on my um, Instagram. Instagram, Instagram page, uh, Fuse Warren, at Fuse Warren. You have a lot on Instagram. 
Yeah, you probably need to call some of it. <laughs> <laughs> and you sometimes share some of that on Facebook too. Yeah, yeah, I, you don't get as, as heavy a response on Facebook when you're showing your art. I think people kind of think you're being into egotistical or something, I don't know. On, oh, on, on Instagram, they expect you to do that, you know. But <laughs> on Facebook, it's like, Instagram. oh, look, look, he's talking about himself again, you know. So it, you get likes on Instagram, too? I, I, don't, I don't see Instagram for an old guy like me as really serving much purpose. I think I've gotten two jobs off of people seeing my stuff on Instagram. Yeah. To me, Instagram artists, it's just like a bunch of artists like patting each other on the back going, you're still good. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can you keep doing this? Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to keep doing this. Okay. Yeah. Good job. Good job. <laughs> well, that's how it's always been. I think yeah. artists support each other. Oh yeah. We're yeah. all, we're all, we all need it. We're, we're all like terminally bipolar, you know, in terms of like, Short I'm wonderful. Stuff. I'm horrible. You know? <laughs> That's for sure. And then the short attention span. That, yeah. That's common. Yeah. 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 The, uh, you've done things around the, the square Cartwrights. Yeah. John Cartwright's been real good to me. <laughs> He's given me a lot of work. Yeah. He's a good guy. A horny, a horned toad. No, I haven't done the horny toad. Or is that the title of one of your? No, 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 no. There's, there's just a horny toad on an old truck on a mural in the in the newer Cartwrights. Oh, that's okay. down on Dallas. Yeah. Um, yeah, John and I sat around and tried to figure out what Texas icons to put. Most of those are his idea. Oh, really? Uh, the horny toad was um, Danny's idea. She's she's the manager of the. Dallas store, she oh, really? specifically requested me put a horny toad in the picture. Well, it has so that was for her. significance around here. Yeah, I mean, I used to catch them all the time. I don't know where they are anymore. I think we killed them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got mowed up probably yeah. or something. And uh, lettering, there's really a lot of history in, in lettering, I guess. And then what you're saying, gold leaf? Uh, yeah, I would really like. Denton to get turned on to gold leaf. There, there that I know of, there are only three gold leaf pieces in town. Uh, one of them is just the the bathroom and the kitchen area in uh, West Oak that I did, and then Sean Starr has done a couple of really nice gold pieces in town at the the uh, the bearded lady. Really. Uh, and at uh, Jupiter House. Oh, really? Yeah. He, yeah. He does mm -hmm. excellent gold leaf work, but uh, all the gold leaf that I've done has pretty much gone away. I think there's some pieces down in Cedar Hill that I did that are still there. And, but it actually uh, the <clears throat> paint has real gold in it. No, it's not. It's not paint. You you uh, put a you call you put a size on the window. There's two or three different ways you can do it. You can do it with a water size. Which makes a real bright, um, go uh, like a mirror finish gold, and then you could use um, different kinds of uh, glues and shellacs and stuff to put to put the gold on there, and it'll be a matte finish. So you can get different textures. Oh yeah. When uh, when the light hits, gold is really cool because it. As you walk past it, the light hits it in different ways, oh. and so it kind of <clears throat> grabs your attention. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you, if you uh, get on Instagram and punch in gold leaf, you will find some wonderful work. There's just so many good gold leaf artists um, out there. Um, but I would like, and that applies to signs a lot of times. Well, there's surface it. leaf. Uh, you know, you can just you can put gold on anything, but if you most of the time, traditionally, gold leaf was either on carved letters uh, or on windows. Mm -hmm. um, it's more of a kind of a window art. It does look good on glass. Oh, it, yeah. It makes like a good lawyer name or something on it. Well, the lawyers used to do it, and the doctors used to do it, mm -hmm. and the banks used to banks, do it. Banks, yeah. Now, mm -hmm. they've all gone to vinyl stickers. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Most of the time when you see gold nowadays, it's going to be coffee shops or tattoo parlors. Hmm. Um, yeah, because the tattoo guys are making good enough money that they can afford it. And uh, the bankers evidently want to keep their money now. 
<laughs> <laughs> they don't want to spend it on a sign guy. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, they probably don't have to. They make money so easily. The um, you you had some murals at Hannah's, but those uh, disappeared or yeah. When Hannah's <coughs> first opened, I think it was different owners, and uh, they were paying me incrementally. We spent about three months on that mural. I had a bunch of people help me. My wife helped me. My, some of my, a couple of my sons helped me. Uh, a friend named Will Lawson did some of the animals <coughs> in that mural. But it was a jungle mural, um, and it lasted about four years. And I sent somebody over there to look at it to try to sell something else, and they came back and told me it was a white wall. So luckily, I got a whole bunch of pictures of it. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I did put that in the in the thing that you know. Oh, that's one of the yeah. The that's slides. one of these. It's this one right here. Yeah. The um, what is this actually? The design atomic ray guns. Oh, uh, Tim, uh, the good friend of mine, and he owns the candy store, Atomic Candy. Atomic Candy. Tim. Yeah, he lets me do the windows a lot, and he commissioned me to do two different T-shirt designs for them. Oh. And one of them was Sugar Skulls. Um, as uh, if you <clears throat> if you look at it real close, it's it's ray guns that I've turned into Sugar Skulls. Oh, really? Yeah. So he's he's a he's a kind of a he let he. There's some people in town that just let me kind of go with what I want. Yeah, yeah, they don't they don't say I don't want this, don't want this. They just say do something. <laughs> <clears throat> I saw this in your studio, the design, Jesus on Jesus. Yes. That one took some time. It's all lettering, and it's, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> it's everything that Jesus said about himself, not about other stuff, not about teaching, not about how you should live. It's just Jesus talking about Jesus, which he says a lot about himself. He, he says he, he, I mean, the record is that you know Matthew and uh, John were actually disciples, so they would have been firsthand. And there, you know, there's people that disagree about that or not. But I just I decided to choose people who were firsthand, uh, at least historically, and recorded what he said. And over and over and over, he said he was the Son of God, and uh, his enemies said he said it. That's why they killed him. So there's not much dispute that he headed that direction. Um, but I did a Bible study and wrote all this stuff out and I'm like, nobody's gonna read this. This is like, why would they look at this? So uh, I hit on the idea. Yeah, art. I hit, hit on the idea that if I made it kind of a puzzle, that maybe at least people would read some of it. I think it's really so, clever the way you've done that. Yeah, and I, I was looking, I was thinking about doing some other pieces where it was like Karl Marx on Karl Marx. Yeah. And you know different people, and you you do the research, and you realize that nobody really talks that much about themselves. They talk about you know their philosophy or mm -hmm. you know the direction or what how people need to straighten up or whatever. Historical figures don't keep going. I'm important. I'm important. But then but I realized most that don't, yeah. well, yeah. But then I realized I could do Trump on Trump. You know, it's so my wife said, you're gonna have to use a lot of orange. <laughs> so that may be a future piece, I'm not yeah. sure. That might be a popular one. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure anybody would buy it. Oh, I know somebody that might spend a lot of money on that. But <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I think he spent 10 grand on something, a picture of himself. Oh, really? Yeah. What is this design, motion, not progress? Uh, I did two pieces called Motion Isn't Always Progress. It's one and two. And that's, it's all, it's, you know, it's kind of based on M.C. Escher's bird stuff that he did, uh, but I just made it airplanes. Um, but the, it, that and the other piece, Motion is Not uh, Always Progress, is, um, the other one is, uh, a dual picture that I did where half the picture turns into another picture and it's a girl on a swing that when you open it up it's a clown juggling. Um, but the idea behind motion is not always progress is once you get older you start to realize that a lot of what you're doing is 
just busy work so you won't notice your own depression or <laughs> other stuff. You just got to keep busy. You got to keep busy, you know. And so uh, just this idea that so much of what we do is not necessarily useless, but I, I am just the daily that we get up and then you have to fix something <laughs> for breakfast and then you have to wash the dishes and then you have to. Well, it's not about the mundane nature of life so much as the self-importance that we all start to think that our actions are you know, what we're doing is really, really important. I, I had this idea that when I did the, if I'm talking too long, shut me down, but if I, uh, when I, when I did the mural uh, for Kroger, I went and I got it cut and the people that cut the boards cut them at an angle. So th when I put them together, I, you know, primed them and everything, put them together, well, they didn't line up. The tops were doing this, okay? Oh, Just really? like by a quarter of an inch or half an inch. Yeah. So I ran around for two days trying to get that fixed, and they said they couldn't fix it because their saw was broke, or in another place said they couldn't fix it because it's too small a piece. And then I spent two days, I had to buy a, a kind of a wall to run my saw down, so I did it myself. So two days of running around and 60 more dollars than I needed to spend, and I, I had this thought, I realized, I wonder how much time on this planet is spent fixing things that other people didn't do right the first time. Like yeah. the enormous amount of time that we all spend That's by going, oh no, oh no, I gotta fix that. And so you spend three days on a, on a three second problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and that's the kind of, that's kind of motion is not progress. That's the mentality of that, is that so much of what we're doing is like, it's busy work to, un to undo what we did wrong. I would say that's pretty universal that a lot of people can relate to that. Gold samples. This shows some of the gold leaf yeah. lettering. Yeah. Yeah. And gold west oak. Yeah, that's the only piece I have in town that's gold. All the others have gone away. The, you know, businesses went out of business and somebody else moved in there and scraped them off. So. Yeah. And then the rest of those are just pretty much murals, except yeah. for the the wood carving. The the bishop art, that's that's a project you were involved with in the past. Yeah, that's a lady uh, named Cresha Drysdale, and I've been working for her for 40 years. She's owned a lot of different businesses in Duncanville and Dallas. And oh, really? Yeah. So she pretty much calls me whenever she opens a place to do uh, blackboards for her and, you know, just... Yeah, I saw a picture on uh, Facebook that she had a, uh, a younger girl lettering some stuff, so I may have lost my my position as her go-to sign guy. She may, may have found somebody closer or something. Yeah, down there. Yeah. And that's your mural at Cartwright's? Yeah, yeah. The city, mural city tech? Yeah. Brian Levings, who used to work for the tech department, got my foot in the door to do that mural. That's That mural is called Shape, Shapes of Denton or Shape of Denton. So oh. they just they just wanted a bunch of Denton icons on there. Mm -hmm. um, when you when you're a when you're a sign guy or an artist in Denton, you you end up painting the courthouse oh, a, yeah. a lot. A lot, yeah. <laughs> so that one's got the courthouse in it. And this mural garden. That the the uh, that a friend of mine uh, who will have to remain nameless because if. If, what, if I tell who he is, then people will find out where it is, and the lady who lives next door doesn't want people tromping her lawn to go look at it. Oh, yeah. Um, but he he was very kind, and the lady that lived next door to him was, uh, was English, and she uh, had like a little garden, and her garden started dying. I don't know, the trees were dying and stuff. So he decided to pay me to paint um, an English garden, her, her patio faces this wall, and uh, he, he paid me to paint an English garden for her to look at when she goes out Just to have patio. a background out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a good idea. Instead of, a, instead of his big yellow wall. Yeah. So I, he, was, he was real kind, and uh, he's a good guy here in town, and if you approach me, I'll tell you who he is. Well, that's pretty nice. Yeah. And then the, you have a slide of the uh, jungle murals at, yeah. at, at, that were at Hannah's. And then uh, 
some of the murals they're just pictures of the of the art. My my uh, stepson David Piper took a picture of me finishing putting the last touches on the bearded monk and bearded monk. That's yeah, the so that's a that's foot. a pretty cool picture he took. I thought it was a that is nice a cool picture. Is that still there now or the bearded monk is yeah that. Uh, what you painted there? Yeah. Yeah, that's still there. Yeah, yeah. that was me and uh, the, the bunch of people at the party painted that together. Yeah. And then the Sweetwater, what, that's a snake? Yeah, the Sweetwater snake is probably the first big thing I painted when we moved to Denton, when my wife and I moved to Denton. Really? We got married and decided to move up here instead of me joining her life or her joining my life. We thought that that might create tension, so we decided we would come to Denton, Texas, and do something completely different. I had kids in UNT at the time. That makes sense. So they let me paint a big snake on the side of the building. So and that kind of that kind of that was my that was my selling card to pretty much everybody else that I would approach. It was like, have you seen the snake? You know, because it's a big yeah, but it's gone. Gone in the sign business. A lot of what you do lasts. A few years. Yeah, a few it, years, and then it transitions into something else. Yeah, yeah. How do you say it? Wise Jordan? Jordan, um, that's Jordan Weiss uh, standing in front of a spray paint that I did of her dad here in town. He, really? He's since moved uh, up to the, the northwest, and she still is in town. She uh, cuts hair. Um, here in town, but uh, that was my first graffiti. Oh, I've, been really? I've been doing this 40 years, yeah. and I've never really done spray cans or graffiti. Dan Black approached me when I was painting a sign for um, Damon Warren on his uh, dent, his hail, you know, fixing place, and. He was like, I was painting on corrugated, I was painting circles on corrugated for a, for a big hand that said unding. And Dan approached me and said, why are you using a brush to do that? It's taking you forever to do that. I'm like, well, I've never done spray paint. This will last longer. And uh, so this is just what I do for a living. I was, well, I've got this wall that I've got permission to paint the whole wall. Come over here. So it's like, this was my, maybe my second or third encounter with Dan Black, who's an incredible artist here in town. And he, uh, he said, uh, I'm going to give you a space on my wall. So uh, Eric had posted that he was growing his hair back out, because all of us old guys used to be hippies, who used to be hippies, not all of us old guys used to be hippies. My friends who used to be hippies, you know, they retire and they go, Screw it! I'm not going to get a haircut anymore again. You know, yeah. I've left the job. Now we're, we're going back to who I really am. So he was growing his hair out, and he posted this, you know, this picture of himself online. So I kind of like extended the hair, and did this like tribute piece to my friend Eric Weiss uh, on the wall. And uh, so Dan let me use his spray paints, and I I went to it and. So that's my first. That's my first and probably last graffiti. Yeah. Um, but I, he, I just really think it. For the a first piece, I was like really happy with how it came out. And yeah, I like it. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming down today and, okay. and sharing some stories about your art and so on. And thank you guys for checking us out. I really appreciate it, and I hope that you have a great day.